How's it going, everybody? Brian Elvers and Dave Meltzer here, Wrestling Observer Radio. It is August 25th, 2022, figure4online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. we got a lot of news to get into here today. A lot from AEW, including the fact that they did do the unification match tonight on Dynamite. And John Moxley beat CM Punk clean in the middle, two Death Riders after Punk had thrown a kick and re-injured his uh, bad foot in storyline. Moxley gave him the two Death Riders, pinned him, unified the titles, did a promo later in the show talking about how it's his time. And at this point, they have not made an announcement as to what the main event of All Out is going to be, but presumably that uh, will be revealed either Friday or next Wednesday on Dynamite. So better they've be, got... Better, better, it should be revealed quick. They probably should reveal it uh, today on the internet because it's getting late. We've only got uh, a couple days. We've got like just over a week, but it, it is Punk and Moxley. I don't know if they're going to add stips or whatever, but that is the main event. And um, But yeah, it should be announced uh should be announced they probably should get a promo from punk up like as quickly as possible if not friday um i know at the taping punk didn't do anything live but they probably should do something from a backstage standpoint so but yeah they need to get that thing waiting till wednesday is for the main event um i mean you can do it you know i mean um pay-per-views the decisions to buy pay-per-views is usually a last minute decision anyway but it's probably better to get the main event out on, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ahead of time. And uh, Friday would be eight days ahead of time. Wednesday would be just a few days ahead of time, four days ahead of time. All right, we'll review the shows here in a while, but there was a meeting backstage at AEW today where Tony Khan and I believe Jericho, Omega, the Young Bucks, some others talked as well. And... Don't have too many details. Tony talked about contract tampering, and I guess they'd sent a uh, legal letter to WWE about it. And essentially, you know, so, the end so, of the day. So on that, on that one, apparently, you know, there's been people going like, "Who's the person?" Um, you know, and trying to make guesses who the person is that was tampered. And it's actually, I mean, I don't know the details, but multiple people have been contacted um, from WWE. So that's where this comes from. It's not. It's not like it's one person to pick a name. It's it's a number. It's it's a few people. So, yeah. Tony gave a raw raw speech. Said that uh, uh, essentially, you know, he was trying to do the best for the wrestling business. And um, I was told I wasn't told all the details, but I was basically told that at the end of the meeting, most people came out of it feeling a lot better about things, and uh, and some people maybe did not. But uh, the vast majority apparently came out of it feeling better about things. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, in, in the issue that's actually up right now, I kind of suggested this meeting needed to happen, given everything that's been happening there, all the turmoil, which isn't it's like it, there is turmoil. You know, I mean, there is this stuff. It's it's um, I mean, it's a lot of stuff going on in a short in a short period of time, but it's not as, it's in a lot of ways. It's not as much turmoil as people think, but there is turmoil. That said, um, I did say that uh, one of the things they needed to address, which they did not, is the CM Punk situation. And, uh, you know, because a lot of what's happened stems from that. And I didn't think that they would bring it up because, you know, that would be a very difficult subject in a lot of ways. But um, there are people who believe that Punk is the reason that Cabana, I mean, the, the, the Colt Cabana situation, that Colt Cabana is um, not, you know, not in the Dark Order and not in AEW, although he is signed to Ring of Honor, and I believe for the same money that he was making in, in AEW. Um, but I know also that um, Punk has told people that that's not the case. So they need... I mean, that's really a big, I mean, it's not, believe me, it's not the only problem, but it is a problem that started a lot of things. And it certainly started the, um, you know, the situation with um, Adam Page and Punk. And, and, and if you watch the show, there was no Adam Page. 
There was no answering it. There was no mention of him in, you know, the Punk Moxley match, Adam Page looking for the winner, anything that would turn this into an angle, not saying that they won't later. Um, but, you know, that, whatever the whatever it is, and I don't know what it is, I don't know what the truth is, I'll just say that um, for, to clear the air, they needed to tell whatever the real story is and, and, and did not. So in that situation, you know, you still have the same situation. So that was, you know, it was not addressed. Um, I'm trying to think what other stuff comes out of that. Not really. Um, I think that's like the kind of like the main thing, I guess. I don't know. Do you hear any more? That was uh, largely all of the details that I heard. So, in fact, I, I didn't hear really any details, just the big picture of most people left the meeting feeling better than when they went in, on the, although... Uh, they, they, Few I people know, did not. I know they talked a little bit about, um, you know, just like chain of command and things like that. And uh, didn't really hear a lot of details about the meetings other than other than that. But, uh, you know, yeah, there's uh, they definitely have to get certain things under control there because a lot's happened in a short period of time. Eddie Kingston and Sammy, for example. Well. Yeah. So so the the only thing I know is that they had a confrontation uh, a couple weeks ago and Eddie was suspended. The suspension's over. Um and that's largely it. I know I'm going to get myself in trouble here, but um a lot of um I'll just say this. Um cuz Eddie said I can say, you know. Um so this is not what I would get in trouble over, but Eddie said that I can say that he was, um, you know, that sometimes he does things that he shouldn't and and he was sorry and um, he owns up to it. I don't know if Eddie Kingston and, and uh, Sammy is on the pay-per-view. It hasn't been mentioned. They haven't been mentioned. Sammy was, Sammy was not suspended. Sammy's obviously because he's been on, you know, doing the mixed tags. Um, and there's no, you know, there's been no hint of where Sammy fits on the show. You know, obviously they had announced um, Sammy and Eddie for the pay per view, and have not followed up on it. Or, or you know, in the I don't last think so much weeks. announced, but they shot an angle where they wanted the match, and then it was never mentioned again. Well, they shot an interview where Sammy accepted the match, but the interview ended up being pulled. So that's again. Um, I mean, it was you know. They did do that. You know, I mean, Eddie Eddie said we've got a match at the pay-per-view. And Sammy, you know, mentioned the match, too. So, but, but and it was scheduled for the pay-per-view. Um, but I don't know that it's on the pay-per-view. I don't know what's going on. And I don't know that anyone knows what's going on. There was also a very weird interview on the show today where uh, Thunder Rosa, in tears, first said that she was relinquishing the title but then said that there would be a match to determine an interim women's champion. And then later she reiterated it would be an interim women's champion. So it appears that she is still the women's champion, but she's injured, she said. She and said so they're injured. going to be doing a four-way at the pay-per-view to crown an interim champion, who then presumably would face Thunder Rosa later, and I guess unify the titles. Yes, Tony Storm, Britt Baker, Jamie Hayter, and Hikaru Shida, and um, they really net. You know the 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 division lost a lot of ground when when Britt Baker lost the championship, and you know that's just what happened. You know the interest level went down, and um, I don't know that that means they're getting it back on Britt Baker, but they were going to make a change. I mean, that, you know, whether if if, if Rosa was not, um, you know, if Rosa was on the show, she was going to lose. So as far as, like, what happened and everything, you know, they said an injury. Um, and uh, in theory, that means that when this injury is over, she would face whoever would win, which, like I said, if you look at... Um, it almost needs to you know the, the problem with AEW. I mean, I I know that they had Sheeta's champion and she did she did well. She had good matches and all, um, 
but you know she hasn't been featured much i mean the only people that have really shown i don't know i mean i guess you know penelope ford did show some ratings movement ability early on but she has she's been out for a long time she's not in the match and has, hasn't been pushed at that level anyway and actually just lost to athena um you know jade at times has shown you know ratings of moving ability Britt at times has shown ratings of moving ability the women obviously for the most part it's been very tough they usually are not strong ratings movers uh they really want to get the division going um i'm trying to think there's any way riho was the other one who always gets over in her matches i'm not saying she should be champion but i don't know why she's not featured more um and you know i guess in this match you know i guess because she hasn't been on tv at all um in a long long time i don't even i don't even remember the last time she was on tv though um the last time i saw her was in vegas in a match for i think it was dark elevation or dark with they that they taped on the friday and it was a six woman tag and she tore the house down as she as she often does and um i think she's been in some matches since but i don't recall her on tv in a while so anyway you know um the four women you know tony storm has been featured on tv jamie hater's been featured on tv Britt baker's been featured on tv and uh um sheeta a little bit i mean she has been at least around so um they're in the match and that is well i mean the if idea. the if the idea was that thunder rosa was losing at the pay-per-view then it would make sense that uh tony storm would win the four-way because she was that would have been the plan for her to leave all out as champion yes. so you know tony it's hard for him to change plans he likes to stick to his plans and so you know it doesn't really make sense for tony storm to be in line for the title and then the match gets changed, and then someone else walks out with the title. I mean, you could do whatever you want, but you can do whatever you want. My guess would be that Tony would win, and then she would do the unification match with Thunder Rosa, which was the match that he wanted to do in the first place. Yeah, but Tony hasn't moved numbers. That's the problem. You know, I think that, that well, she didn't move numbers before Thunder Rosa got hurt either. And if she was going to leave with the title, she was going to leave with the title. Yes, but you can always reevaluate these things. Um, I mean, if this build for, for, for Tony Storm and Thunder Rosa was super, super hot and, you know, people were clamoring for it, that's one thing. But they need to get this, um, I mean, they need, they need to get excitement into that women's division right now. It's not doing well. And, it, you know, especially because they are, they have a lot of projects with women, you know, all elite women's coming up. You know, whenever. I don't know when, but it's coming up. Not to mention, so, WWE is going full bore into this women's division. Well, WWE can do whatever WWE wants to do. But they, well, they, they can, but there's going to be contracts coming up in AEW. And if you're a female wrestler in AEW, and you look at their women's division, and you look at the other company's women's division, I mean, it's not a hard decision at this point. You know, in theory, if, if, you're, if, you're, someone who, if you're someone who could make it in the WWE women's division, yes perhaps um but that's not everyone in the AEW women's division it's very few in the AEW women's division really i mean there's a few for sure um but um yeah well whatever it is if they want to strengthen their division um they need to have their best personality as the focal point and and uh, tony storm is not that person Britt baker's that person you know i mean it's sometimes people complain it's been done before she's already been champion but right now they're in a position where they need to strengthen the division, you know, and it's like, who is the strongest mover? Who is the best personality? Um, who's the most charismatic person right now? And, you know, Britt Baker is that person. So that's who, I mean, I'm pretty convinced on. I'm not saying that's what he's going to do. He may very well go with Tony Storm um, just because it's new. And maybe Tony Storm has promised it or something. And if that's the case, he will, you know, not want to go back on that, perhaps, if that's the case. But, um you know, um, I mean, they need to get that division moving and up and moving in an upward division. They need to get the whole company moving in an upward division. But, um, you know, I mean, the, the women's stuff has been, you know, weekly, the weakest stuff when it comes to the audience. So, um, you know, that's they need to, they need, you know, putting it on someone who is not going to change that is probably not a good idea right now. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. 
We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.